What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hashtag VK Talks Too Much. On this episode, my very good friend Latavia and I from the It's All Good podcast will be doing something fun today. We'll be talking about our favorite 90s shows that we grew up watching. So, madam. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where to start if I want to start like 91 90s or should we just like the first thing that pops in our head I would say let's just go with what pops in our head because I I looked up some stuff in terms of trying to remember what came out when but... um, okay so the, so, I, so the first one that I'm thinking of off the gate because we were talking about it prior to is Boy Meets World oh yes definitely so were you a fan of Boy Meets World? Uh, yeah, I was. Um, let me see, and even I, ch- I even tried to watch when they re- they did the the reboot of Girl, Girl, Meets Girl Meets World. I did watch a few episodes, but I was just like, it's not my time anymore. This isn't for me anymore. But no, I definitely I loved um, Boy Meets World. Like Corey and Topanga was, I would say they were relationship goals before that was a thing. Um, so yeah, them, um, Sean. I liked Sean. I think everyone liked Sean in some shape or form because he was just like so moody and mysterious and you just wanted to hug him. But at the same time, he has so much drama. You're just like, Sean. Yeah, that I think if I were to go back and watch it now, it's like, mm, he was dealing with some serious stuff that I didn't even comprehend them, but yeah, like, and Mr. Feeney was also one of my favorites. Like the best. Yes. Um, I, 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 I know I wanted to have a Mr. Feeney in school. Like, I was like, where's my Mr. Feeney? I need my teacher that I can hang out with, talk about everything. Never quite got a Mr. Feeney, but. I, I, I mean. <laughs> Kind of. It was like, you you were at CR for a little bit. Yeah. Did you ever have Fisher? Long ponytail? No. No, it was a black guy. Yes. So yes. Black. yes, I remember. Probably, I would say he was the, yeah, he was the closest outside of Coach Williams. Like, yeah. I would say, I, but I just still didn't hang out with him. Like, but See, there my- were like moments. Mine was my fourth grade teacher. I don't even know if I should say her name. Miss Stanley. She was like, okay. It's so problematic. Okay, she was a lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. But I was in fourth grade, so I didn't exactly know what that was. I just thought she was like a super tomboy, right? But Miss Stanley was like the coolest teacher ever. You remember those giga pets that we used to have? Oh, yeah. I, I promise you, I must have had 10 of them. And she took every single one of them. <laughs> Stop playing games. She took every single one of them. But she was like the realest teacher. Like, she kept it all the way real with everybody. She was pretty dope. I like this thing. Oh, That's yeah. good. Yeah, I had teachers that I had, like, moments with that I liked. But I remember really liking my second grade teacher. I think her name was Miss Staccato, or it was some with an S. It was when I was in Turkey, but um, it was her and Mr. I think his name was Mossberg, but it was like they we had our classes would cook together every week, and that was the thing that I liked the most. Like I can't tell you much anything else about second grade, but I know that we cooked and we created a cookbook, and like that was the highlight for me. <laughs> You're trying to remember second grade, like what the heck did I do? Second yeah, that's that's I all I got. Second grade teacher, though, I did not like that lady. Her name was Miss Wallace. Miss Wallace, if you are listening to this, you were <laughs> awful. Okay, you were awful. The worst. Oh, like you, you still you still feeling a way about that? I can tell. Like it's still. Okay, if I see her walking in the street today, I'm a no. She wrote a note home to my mom. I know this is way off topic, but she wrote a note home to my mom because I went like this in the classroom, okay? <laughs> I told her that I was being disruptive and causing ruckus and all this foolishness. Because you know, I used to be able to flip 
it. I can't do it anymore. Really? Oh, yeah, they're talking about. I was, saying, I was in third grade. And you got a letter written home? And a, whole, a whole letter this long. Your daughter is disrupted. Blase, blase. Oh, and I can only imagine how your mom reacted to that one. She was a terrible lady, okay? Terrible. But a side note, I did enjoy the reboot. I thought it was cute. Mm -hmm. It was cheesy. Um, but it, you know, it was okay. Yeah, no, like I said, I didn't watch it regularly, but, like, I did watch a few episodes because I just felt like I needed to. Just right. to, to because, you know. yes. Um, but, no, like I said, Boy Meets World was definitely one. I'm trying to, and I don't remember her, the character's name, but when they got to high school, the one that Sean was dating, the girl Sean was dating. Oh, um, um, Angela. Yes. The black girl, right? Yes, I like their relationship. I just, I like the dynamic of the show and just, and what was his? I always felt like Angela's character was kind of forced because Sean needed a partner. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> because especially as I said, it was like towards the end they kept, and I think maybe it was they had gone to college mm -hmm. or something. But it was yeah, she wasn't regular, but they would. It was like they were trying to find a way to to make her regular. Keep him on the show and keep like keep him keep his storyline relevant or something like so he could evolve too. Yeah. Since Corey and Topanga were, you know, they had their whole world. But now let me ask you this, because I kind of thought that the show started getting a little bit corny towards the end because you remember it was their freshman year and they got engaged, they got married, and then it was like all that marriage drama. Yeah, and I think so. And now I'm be honest, I do not remember the last seasons that clearly. <laughs> but I but I think it's kind of similar to with what they were doing with Sean's characters. Like they were trying to keep it going, but it just was like it's like, okay, this is it. Cause I guess they figured because the people who are watching it in theory, we were getting older too. And so because I would say a sim they did it was similar with Saved by the Bell. Yes, but that was another one of mine. Times would say about they had like high school, and then they had the college years, and then they had the after college years. Like this is too much. People. Yeah, and it was just like okay, it was great. And as much as I would love to see them grow up and this evolve and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's time to just say we we're right. done. Let's let's wrap it up and let's let's go out on a high note and right. not keep. Is it was like okay thank you for sharing <laughs> right but i mean hey it was still a good show and i really liked the theme song oh or were you yeah. talking about see by the bell because i don't remember this by the bell i mean i i like both of them <laughs> i can't um, know some like some uh, I remember like your dog ate, dog ate all your homework last night and some about the bell ring. It's all right because I'm saved by the bell. Like I remember that part. But yeah. I got no. <laughs> but I also, I'm not sure. I feel like saved by the bell may have started in the 80s. Um, see, according to my notes, <laughs> I did write it down. It did start in 1989. Yeah. But it's okay because the next year was 90. So technically... Right. Show. It was still a 90s show, yeah, because I realized, um, darn it, I should have written it down, but it was, I want to say A Different World, which was another one of my favorites from the 90s, started in the late 80s. Well, since we spoken spoken about it. <laughs> <laughs> was that one not on your list? Oh, no, it's here. It's here. It started in 1987. I got you, girl. And it ended in 1993. Which was shocking to me. I was like, it ended in 93, but then I was like, if it started in 87, it was on for a couple of years. It was on, it was like five, five or six seasons. Mm -hmm. And a different world was college gold because I'm, that, I'm gonna go to the HBCU. My HBCUs are gonna be popping. I'm gonna have drama. I'm gonna have sorority life like this. I'm looking forward to going to an HBCU. I wanted to go to Hillman, not just an, and when I tell you how devastated I was when I realized it, like, I think I knew it wasn't real, but I still felt like, no, they're, 
is a human and I'm going. I'm going. I started playing the saxophone because I wanted so good. It was like, this is a real school. They had a, the shirts and the emblems and everything. I was like, I'm going to hell. Oh, most definitely. I started learning how to play the saxophone because I wanted to play and then I also wanted to be in the marching band Facts. at an HBCU. Facts. And then I saw CR's marching band and I said, no, I'm not doing it. And, but that's another story. <laughs> and I chose, I chose basketball over the saxophone. But anyway, but yeah, no, Hillman, uh, I mean, a different world, definitely. Like, it was a great show. I loved the theme song. Um, both, ver you know, all of the versions of it. But one of the other things that I would say that I, that I love and I have a greater appreciation for it now is even now watching it, mm. it's still relevant. Yes. The, the, the storyline, the, the different issues that they address. Because I remember when it first came on, um, they first put it on Netflix. I think this was back in like, maybe like 2013, 2014. Mm. And I was sitting there watching it like I had not seen any of the episodes before. But I was just like, oh my God, this is still relevant right now. And it's like almost as, you know, fashion is different, but like it could have been made now. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. And I think that a lot of the um, 90s sitcoms, what I can say, whether white sitcoms or black sitcoms, a lot of them did touch on, excuse me, those social issues, um, stop the violence, put the guns down, drugs, um, sex before marriage, all of the 90s shows, I can distinctly remember an episode where they would say, bring your guns to the whatever place, yeah, or something, and then have that little PSA at the end of it, you know, Family Matters wants to say stop the violence or whatever it was. I was thinking about Family Matters when you said the gun one, because I, I remember that one, and even on, um, it was a different world when they talked about a HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, because that was Campbell's cool. character was yeah. like the one who had it. Um, they also had like the the best cameo appearances, or like it was like features. Well, my husband made his appearance on a different world in the nineties. I was just like, oh my god, and and and. Who, who, who is your husband? Um, Tupac Amaru Shakur. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Yes, that was, yeah. Listen, uh, what was his name? Piccolo? Piccolo. <laughs> you hear me? He was Piccolo. Oh, buddy. And yes. Lena. That was her. Piccolo like, and Lena. Yes. yes. And then what was the, um, Ronnie, what was, I can't remember his character's name, but the one that Lena ended up dating, but like he was, oh, he was oh, waiting uh, so many. He called him Fire Boy or something Fire like that. Fire Boy, yeah. I think his name was, I want to say like Alvin, I don't know. I can't remember. Although I'm sitting here like I don't have access to the internet to look these things up. You know whose boyfriend I did like from shows back in the 90s? Um, oh my gosh. She, she, was, she was on a different world with, with Lena and them. Uh, Charmaine's boyfriend. Lance. Lance. Because he was, yeah, because he they, they they brought them over from the Cosby from the Cosby Show. Listen, Lance, Lance, like, he was so fun and so <laughs> positive, but so just a boy at the same time. I was yes. like, it's like yeah. not even trying to hide it or pretend. He was just yeah. So uh, I'm here. I'm gonna go see what I can see, and like you cool, but I'll see you later. Lance was everything, man. Yes. And then uh, what was one of my favorite, like, moments from Different World is when uh, Charmaine and, I can't think of his name, but when they were learning French, they were in French class, and they had that test that they were trying to prepare for, but they neither of them knew it. And they were, like, up all night trying to study. And it was just, jump up hell, Charmaine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, jump up hell, I'm up hell. And it was, what was it? The, uh, the, um... Terrell, I think, is what his name is. Yeah, the guys, the guy, the math teacher's son. Wasn't oh, it the, uh, the math teacher's son? Was it Terrence? Terrence or something? 
with the yeah, um, Colonel or uh, Major Gang, not Gang, Colonel Taylor, Lord, not Major Payne. I was thinking Gaines, but that was Mr. Gaines, but yeah, Colonel Taylor's son. Colonel Taylor's son, yes. Jamie Bell, I'm a bell. Not a dope theme song, too. There were so many, like. They, who was on yeah. there? Uh, Whitley, Jasmine Guy, um, what's the name? Everybody's auntie, uh, Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis, she was the dean. Um, um, Chris Summers. Yes. Uh, What's his, I think his name is Gary Dorden or something, but Shaza. Listen. That relationship was so weird, especially Aside after she, like, flipped. Shaza was fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. That man was fine. He was yeah. but he was fine. Right. <laughs> and then, but even the other thing, too, was when, because it was Ron and Kim were dating, and then that was Ron weird. and Freddie ended up together. He was he was mm-hmm. such a teen at the time. Well, that was a word. Ron was just hopping all over the place. Oh, but he was. And oh, well, that's right. The first season, Sinbad was on there. Okay. He was the um coach the first season. He was, he was. Maybe, maybe like the first two two maybe the first two seasons because mm-hmm. him and Jaleesa dated. Yeah. And they were supposed to get married. Yeah. But then Jaleesa ended up marrying Colonel Taylor later on, which I'm still not clear on <laughs> when and how that happened, even after rewatching it. But because I don't think they gave a clear definition, or it was defined when Sinbad's character left, he just kind of didn't show back up. No, he. I think he got another job. Oh. I think it was he got a job somewhere else. But I do because, and this is mainly because I went back and rewatched it, but. <laughs> It was something about a job, and like they did like a going away thing, and I think he was even trying to get Delisa to go with him. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, You're right. But she stayed. Yeah. So. Absolutely right. But it wasn't until I want to say it was like after, um, like they had graduated. It was after they had graduated that she that Jaleesa started dating Colonel Taylor. Taylor, right. Because it was a conflict, I think. Which, like I said, I mean, happy for them, <laughs> these fictional people, but yeah. Um, fictional people gave me hope, though. And what I want to say about every sitcom that we're probably going to talk about today is that they all lied to us. Okay. Oh, most definitely. Every last one of them. I'm just going to put a disclosure out there. Every last one of them. I thought high school was going to be popping and jumping. I thought I was going to have a beach party every other day. College was going to be bumping. They all lied to me, okay? Set me up for the serious okie doke. Matter of fact, I, I talked about this in a um, an episode recently of just like, I love TV. I love reading. And I was all up in it. I thought high school was going to be a certain way, college, and there were moments, but it was like they took those moments and made it seem like that was the experience. That was everything. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just like, they really messed me up. And now that I'm an adult watching these shows, I'm even more heartbroken because I'm like, you know, I was really waiting to go to college and go to high school and be like, high school's going to be just like Moesha, man. I'm going to find you. We go. I'm gonna have we at the poetry slam, and then and? no, you know. Apparently, I wasn't watching the right shows because most of our time was spent in practice somewhere. <laughs> like, what? What is this? The closest, and then look, we were in Delaware, so what? The closest we had was I remember Dairy Queen being the hangout spot in like like fast food places. Remember when people started getting older and they had that little club? And they would go to the parking lot, let out. Oh, that was my thing. I do a parking lot party. Like I can't. So but I yeah, no, because it just—it's crazy. And like I watch it when I watch them now, I still enjoy it. But mm-hmm. there is there is a cynicism. I watch it with cynicism now. Just like, mm, yeah, that's not how it really works. Like it's gonna have a few moments like this, but that's not really life. Uh, but. Was it my real life? No. One thing I can't appreciate about um, a lot of the 90s shows like Martin and 
uh, living single, fresh prince. One thing that they always did subliminally is promote college. Oh, definitely. Have you ever repeat that? Oh, I, I I saw it then, and I appreciate and that's even now I appreciate it even more. Just like all the different. Um, they'd have the sweatshirts from the different HBCUs or just different people, different things. And it was like, even the characters that didn't go, if the characters didn't go to college or even the actors themselves didn't, they were still pushing it. Yeah. And I, I, I always loved that. Like on the Fresh Prince, I remember Will had on a, um, the, uh, the Duke sweatsuit. Remember the Duke sweatsuit? They oh, had yeah. the, big Duke, the blue and white sweatsuit. Mm -hmm. I remember that one distinctly. Like. Will was always, I think he had a Howard on one time, or maybe I'm oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, and they definitely pushed Princeton. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always try to figure out who went to Princeton because. Yeah, like why was that the thing? Every other, every other day we're listening to Princeton. Remember, um, remember when, remember when Ashley was singing the, um, her song? Remember her song she sang? Oh my gosh. It's like, like I can it was one of her own. Well, no, no, it wasn't like a Tatiana Ali song. It was an Ashley. Okay. Song. Remember when they was at the little, when the oh, boy was in college and Will discovered that she can sing. Oh, that's right. And he was trying to be her manager. Yeah. And he messed everything up. You remember that? It's like, it's right here at the tip of my tongue, but I can't. I remember. can't remember the name of the song, but. Oh, oh yeah, this... wait, 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 wait. To make up your mind, then oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Listen, I'm a 90s kid, you hear me? I'm a 90s kid. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, I'm just, I've been trying to figure it out because, like, that was when I, um, when I talked about it, like, in the episode, just about the fact, you know, the theme songs, mm -hmm. like, they all had a theme song that, like, stood out. Mm -hmm. I've been at parties in school, you know, when I was in college, and they would play theme songs to certain shows um but like that's not a thing anymore but i just feel like the stuff with the shows then whatever they were doing in the writing room or the writer's room like they it was good then mm -hmm. and it was class it's timeless it's classic mm -hmm. like it's still and not to say that none of the current shows have any of those aspects there are some but i, I just don't feel like it's it's the same um, and maybe because we didn't have social media or the internet yet true true and that's pro that's probably a part of it too because i remember in elementary school and junior high school coming home thursday nights watching shows friday tgi friday watching right, Fridays, yes saturday morning cartoons like i remember these things Just and that was a thing on sunday okay you don't understand. Like sister, sister came on on Sunday uh, on UPN or ABC, one of them TV channels, and I was in front of the TV for thirty minutes. See, I couldn't watch TV during the week, so most of my stuff came on the weekend. So I don't remember days of the week for everything because no. I had to record it. Yeah. VHS, and then go back because that was before on demand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and TV over here, yeah, I would record it, and then. Better not record over the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no. Sister Sister was one of my favorites. All like, yeah. Go home, Roger. <laughs> the dynamic is funny because the dynamic between the twins, like Tia was the nerdy smart one, and then Tamara was the party fun girl. But then when you see them in real life, it's like opposite. Opposite. It's like Tamara Tia is always out and about, and Tamara is holier than thou. And that's just like, <laughs> but from, I didn't watch all of the, like the entire series, but when they had their reality show, I watched it. It did seem like Tamara had her, she had her time mm -hmm. that she was like out there partying and doing whatever. And then it was like, she was like, oh no, yeah, let, me, <laughs> let me bring it all back in and no, but yeah, it's. I watched I watched their reality show. I thought I thought it was real cute. I did. I thought it was super super cute. I was like, oh y'all are normal just like everybody else. Yes. <laughs> very, very normal. There were arguments on that reality show, and that's one of the reasons why they said they stopped it. But their arguments were like nasty. Like mm -hmm. they they argued like sisters and it was just 
They, I, I could understand them not wanting to have that image of them out there because their image has been so clean for so long. But but you watched them. Well, I mean, hey, they they are sisters, and but I would say that was one thing that I the episodes I did see that I appreciated is mm-hmm. that they were being themselves. They weren't like putting on this. There wasn't this like pretense of okay, I'm gonna let you in my life, but I'm gonna show you my representative. Like they were themselves. And I was actually, I think it was a podcast I listened to or an article I read that um, Erica Campbell said the same thing about their, the reality show she did with her sister, like for Mary Mary was a big part of why they stopped was because they would always paint it to be, you know, they would take the argument, but then it would kind of, they would edit it in a way to where one of them always, you know, one person was the villain or book. Yeah. Worse than they actually were. And so they were she was like, Yeah, we couldn't keep doing that because it was you know, it was affecting us in our real in our real lives. So it's I I, I, I enjoyed that reality show also. What what just a side note, one thing that didn't that I didn't like was when and this was like at a time where social media was like a thing. Like mm-hmm. everybody was commenting on social media, but people would say stuff like oh, aren't they Christians? Why are they saying these things or showing these things and all this stuff, all they curse? But it's like, at the end of the day, people are people. Right. Like, you live by an example and you try to be that best version of you that you can be. But when you put people on a pedestal to think that they're supposed to be this way all the time, and then you get disappointed, it's like, what did you expect? That's your Right, but then that's the part is like, we're humans. Right we any christians are humans and this whole picture or a little whatever pedestal that people have made out to be of what christianity is supposed to be or look like and sound like is that's another lie that uh i would say as an adult i learned like oh wait y'all was lying to me and you even had me feeling like i gotta stay within me this square and if i step out then I'm I'm wrong and I'm messing up and it's just like yeah no that's 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 not real life that's not the way this works right it's like we gotta make mistakes and it like it is what it is okay so let's get let's get back on track let's get back on track true all right because we've only talked about like four I know family matter yes on a scale of one to ten with ten being super super bomb and one being I mean, I'm going to say it from my lens of when I watched it when I was younger. <laughs> I would say like seven. You would say like what? It would be like a seven. I would feel that too. Mine was like a seven, eight-ish. Because for me, when they were younger, I was bored. But as started getting older like once Jalil White's character came into the frame and they started getting older and the teens were working and they were doing stuff that I could relate to more I was like okay yeah I'm with it but when they were younger I was just like what? okay Carl yeah I think I missed because it started in like 92 nine, like I believe I missed the initial part that show was mm-hmm. a long time it's it was a- on from 89 to 98 wow that show was right so when it first started i know i probably wasn't watching it that much because um in 89 we were like one and two yeah and i was out of the country i wasn't living in the country okay okay and then from 94 to 96 i was i wasn't in the country either so the only way a lot of the shows I didn't see them in real time because people would record it and then send it to us. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and then if it did play, I do remember sometimes being able to watch episodes when we were there, but mm-hmm. they would dub it over in Turkish. Right. And <laughs> that... No flu with Turkish? No, but what was even more frustrating is I could, if I, you know, if you paid it, to, if you really looked hard, you could read their lips and tell that they were speaking English. Of course. But the audio was over it in Turkish and so it's just like we tried a few times and then it just got frustrated like man forget it I just, yes like okay I'm watching but now I gotta <laughs> yeah no 
put the sentence together and then laugh. Like this is too right. Much so, but yeah, but no, I they that, I would say they did. I feel like they did a really good good job of like progressing. Mm-hmm. Like as the kids got older, in terms of like keeping the storyline going like some of the, the later i won't say like the la- later seasons it got a little far-fetched with all the stuff that urkel with steve was doing with nasa and <laughs> but what i can say though that you bring that up is that the technology that steve was doing in 93 and 90 or not no what 95 right and people are actually like doing that stuff now, like actually doing it. And like Urkel's been doing this. Right. The genius that was writing these episodes years of like decades ago. And I think, I feel like all of them are underrated as actors, like the people who were on that show. Yeah. Um, but definitely Jalil White. Like, because the stuff he was doing then. Mm-hmm. It was so different. And I mean, granted, now when I look back at the episodes, I can clearly tell the difference between Steve and Stefan, but <laughs> it was believable to me then. <laughs> like, but the, it really the, felt like he was changing into a whole nother person. But the genius behind Steve and Stefan, like, Jalil White doesn't get his just due for that character. Because I remember, remember the episode when, um, when he first he first turned into Stefan, that's when Laura was being selfish. Oh my god, I want Stefan. Yes. And they that went and everything. They went to dinner and then um Stefan was like, Well, it can last a couple of days, it could last a few hours. He just wasn't aware. But the way that he transitioned from Stefan into Steve was flawless. Like yes. his posture, his mannerisms, like if you actually watch him go from this standing up straight to just how he just slowly transitioned into Steve. He doesn't get his credit, man. He played Steve, okay? Like. No, he did. And it's just like, that's the part that I'm just like, even though, but I guess one other thing too, because now it comes on, I think it's TV one. It's on like every other day, which I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, But, excuse me. What, I forgot my train of thought. But I guess just it's like the the nuance that he had mm-hmm. and the nuances of the characters and how much and it's like I oh that's what it was. I was thinking like could you imagine if they tried if they were if they had the technology that's available today mm-hmm. when they were making the show like how much better or how much more he could have done in terms of that transformation. Yeah. But I don't know, but I, I think about that too. But the authenticity, because uh, I feel like with our technology today, because sometimes technology waters down stuff, like I, like some of the movies, like when they start to remake movies from back then, and then they have all this technology and all that. Like it's cool, but sometimes it's just like, yeah, it's a lot. It's there's definitely overkill with it sometimes. But that's a good point because I think because with specifically with him and Family Matters, that was him. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of makeup and costuming. Like it was him. He brought like even playing Steve Urkel, like knowing that that the pitch of voice he was talking in is so far from his actual voice and then switching. And I'm just like, I feel like he I don't know if he got typecast, he got put in whatever, but it's just like he did his thing on that character like Definitely. that character is phenomenal anytime i anytime i specifically see that episode it's he, the transition that he goes through changing from stefan to steve is just he did a good job like yes and without like that without a lot of extras like it was him oh just him like no doubles nothing that's just all him like he did he did a good job Definitely did a good job. Hmm. What do... Oh, 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 wait. You might not remember this show. Let me see if you remember this show. Do you remember The Parenthood? Yes. Oh, what's about You're talking about Robert Townsend and... and ah. Yes. With uh, Reagan Gomez. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 
Yeah, I remember that one. Definitely remember that one. That was that was one that I feel like it kind of snuck in there. Uh -huh. I don't yep. think it was on that long, but I appreciated it. What does it say? It was on for four years. It was on from 95 to 99. It was on with In the House. Remember In the House with LL Cool J? Yes. I used to get those two shoes two shows confused all the time because it was basically the same show. They were similar. Mm -hmm. I feel like Parenthood was very Afrocentric to yeah. an extent, Great but job. it was like they took the concept from the Cosby show, but made it, they modernized it and then put much more emphasis on, you know, well, this is how, like what happens in, you know, quote unquote, black house. Right, right. And Which in the house, I depiction of black people that's wealthy. What you say? I said I thought the Cosby Show was a good depiction of black people that was wealthy. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the show personally, because you know how people were saying, "Well, black people don't look like that. black people." Look like I don't know what black family you know, but my family look just like them. We got light, light lights and dark, 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 dark. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, I. Loved the Cosby Show, still appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I agree. Like it showed that, like, hey, black families look like this too, or live like this too. Like everybody's not poor, everybody's not in the hood, like everybody's not in the ghetto. Like there's there is a spectrum. We're not a monolith, and I appreciated that. And the same with the Parenthood, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, we're doing well. They may not necessarily have been as wealthy as. Uh, Heathcliff and Claire, but they were doing good. And then it was also they had was it TK was like a cousin or somebody that no he was just he was Lil Dante you know you know Lil Dante they take right but he wasn't there like he was like a family member somebody that had come to live with them no he was he he got in trouble he went to school I remember that episode only because I was watching like a couple days ago uh, he got in trouble he was going to school with Zaria and. <laughs> He did something to Robert Townsend's character, and the wife wanted him to get arrested, but then Robert Townsend was like, well, he's troubled or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was, like, homeless or some foolish, just some, something like that. Yeah, they took him in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can't remember what the son's name was. I remember he had the, the braids. Oh, no, you're talking about the older son. The older son, yeah. He had the, um, the, the braids that, like, he had little box braids, I think, or maybe they were dreads. Oh, the youngest son was Nicholas, I think was his name. Nicholas. Yeah. And the little daughter, I can't yes. remember. Yes. Zari? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, but matter of fact, I was watching In the House this weekend because Yikes. I think it was Aspire had like a marathon. Of In the House? Yes. And I sat there, I had no plans, but it was just like, I was scrolling through and I saw it, so I just thought it was going to be an episode, and then the rest of the night, I was watching In the House, and I was like, I forgot how much I enjoyed this. Wasn't Debbie Allen on that show? Yeah, she was on there, I think she was on there, like, consistently the first two seasons, and then, because it was like, her and her kids were living with him, right. with Ella Cool J's character, um, renting... Uh, rent paying rent to him and then i forget what happened but she ended up moving i think for a job and so her and her son went but his, their daughter tiffany stayed yeah and he was her guardian I'm sure. and i was like i forgot how much i enjoyed kim wayans and how funny she is she is so underrated as an actress oh my god she's not remember her and juana man yes was hilarious because i was just like watching i was like oh my god like i knew she was funny and i, I knew i enjoyed her but it was just like watching it was like oh wow she does not get enough credit mm -hmm. and then even the fact that um was alfonso Rivera was like oh he went i was like i had forgotten that in the house came very shortly after fresh prince ended so it was like that was not a completely different role, but it was a different role or like different from his from Carlton. He was still kind of like the stuffy, pretentious person on in the house because he played the doctor, but 
it was him as an you know as an adult or an older person as opposed to being the high school guy on Fresh Prince. Yeah. But hmm. that one. one had a. I think that one was on for like four years too. What's one of your favorite shows from the nineties? Because I watched all of them. I mean, I think I feel like I watched most, but Living Single, of course, and Different World, I would probably have to say like my yeah. top two. Like, cause to this day, if it's on, mm-hmm. I watch it. Even if I've seen that same episode fifty times, I will sit there and watch it like I haven't seen it before. Yeah, uh, you and know, it was on Hulu. It is. It also comes on TV One like almost every day. All the time. Yeah, so I will do that. Um, I'm trying to there's so many others. Did we talk about what is um you mentioned TGI Friday? Uh did you watch step by step? Of course. Step by step. step day by day. And then I always loved they were on the um they were at the amusement park and they went out like the roller coaster mm-hmm. as a part of it. Um what else? What was uh, the with the neighbor? Remember the neighbor? He was always oh, like, home improvement. Home improvement. Yes. That, that was a one. Favorite. Um, <laughs> Clarissa explains it all. I watched that. Whoa! No, that was Blossom. That, that was, was Blossom. Awesome. But watch that too. Yeah, Clarissa explains it all. Blossom. Um, Alex Mack. Like the Adventures of Alex Mack. She would like turn into the little puddle. Mm-hmm. More into like puddle of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, Pete was it Pete and Pete on Nickelodeon? Oh. Pete and Pete, I think, was one of them. The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. Um, wow. um, That's are you afraid of the dark? Scared the shit out of me. Okay. Yeah, but now I look at it, it's like... When I used to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark, I would legit be sitting with, like... Mm-hmm. And, and, I, it would be, and it felt like it came on real late, but it was probably, like, 8.30. Right, but it'd be pitch black outside. I watch it now, I'm like, what were you scared of? Exactly. <laughs> Are You Afraid of the Dark scared the living lights out of me. You hear me? Did you watch Goosebumps? Bumps? I watched Goosebumps. I had every I- single... Not religiously, but I did watch it. Um, what else was on Nickelodeon? Um, All that. I won't get into that. Oh, that was my show. Okay. Um, 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 what was that show? It's right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Did you watch yes, that? Show? I watched that. Um, did you watch? Lied to me too. Huh? You lied to me too. Oh, most definitely. Did you watch the famous Jet Jackson? Of course. Well, I'm trying to remember if that was like, that might have been into the 2000s. 99, 2000. Yeah, into 2000. That like, into like, even Stevens and... Hillary Duff, yeah. But it's um, like that, I feel like the early 2000s was an extension of the 90s. It was. It was. <laughs> Because you were still wearing the same things that they were wearing in 97 and 98. Yeah, I feel like it didn't really start to shift until maybe like 03, 04. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, we are no longer in the 90s. Um, Because I want to say, I think it was the same with That's So Raven was early 2000s also. It came out in 98. Yeah, That's So Raven came out in like 2000 or 2001 or something. Yeah. That was my show. But Jet Jackson came out in 98, so he's classic oh. 90s baby. Yes. It was heartbreaking when I found out that he died, remember? Yes, I was so sad. You know, it's like, dang, Jet, what happened? You're like, what's going on? Cause... Did you watch, I don't know why Jet Jackson made me think of this daggone movie. Did you watch, um, oh my goodness, Lapidus Lapidus. What is that show? What is that movie? Um, Xenon, the girl of the 21st century. Did you watch that movie? Yeah. <laughs> I figured it had to be something Disney when you said Zetus Lapidus. Yeah, because I remember Raven saying Zetus Lapidus, or whatever she said. Xenon, the girl of the 21st century. Yes. Um, 
they lied to me too because I thought I would be in cyberspace, but I'm still. It is, it is 2020. Um, I feel like we are missing so many. Um, we mentioned Martin and Fresh Prince. Briefed over it, but the genius of Martin, since you brought it up, the genius of that show and the cameos on that show. Biggest, yes. Um, what's his name? What's that man's name? Kid from Kid and Play. Oh, I, like that episode literally like popped in my head when you said it. I have a shenanigan name. <laughs> Jodeci. Remember that episode of Jodeci? Listen. Yes. Hilarious. Who else did he have on there? Arsenio Hall, Tommy Davis. Um, Davidson. Heavy D was on there. R.I.P. Heavy D. R.I.P. Do you know Tommy? Every character that Tommy played, his name was Tommy. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know everyone. I knew there was a lot of them. He has also passed away. He has also passed away. <clears throat> and uh, Cockroach, he was on Martin. What is his name? He was the friend. Oh, um. You know that's Cockroach from the Cosby you Show. Said it and then it went away. Um. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't remember his name. <laughs> you see, Tommy Cole. 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 I was like, yeah. I know this. And then you said cockroach, and I was like, oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah no. Cockroach all grown up. Right. Um, Cam's character. And then we had we had Shanene, we had Bob, we had the snot nose, snot nose little boy. Jerome. Um, Jerome. Mr. Otis. Uh, Sally. That guy. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Me neither. <laughs> but it was. It was. Listen. The, the 90s era was like, like the, from the year we was born, and I'll even give 87. I'll say. 87. Well, I was born in 87, so don't do that. You are, because I'm 88. You're right. So we'll yeah. do this. That's okay. what I mean, because I was thinking about 89. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I'll say 86 to like 2006. That was a good time. It was good quality TV on TV. What? TV, movies? Movies, everything. Like, Books. it was good. But once again, I believe that that's because we hadn't, well, I won't say the internet wasn't created yet in 86, but it, it was not everywhere. It was not everywhere. It was not common. Like the internet, cell phones, like this used to be the cell phones. This be this be hello. Right, and the one in the car where you had the whole case. So like I, but I think that's a big part of it is that we grew up in that. We grew up in the transitional period. The trans, we we literally grew up with technology. Yes. Yeah, so it's like even com you know computers. Like I remember using a typewriter. Hey, when I was younger, still has the typewriter. Why? Turning, turning the thing. Yes, and then don't make a mistake. You gotta get the mic out. Yes, and then push it over. So, like, I remember that you know cassette tapes and having to. I saw a picture or a meme the other day, and it was like a cassette tape and a pencil. It's like if you don't know how these things are connected, you're too young. Go to bed. Hello, we in a cassette tape like this. Right, or or recording something off the radio, and like. Listen, I remember like I used to make mixtapes. Okay, that was, I grew up in New York, so you know that was our thing. We used to make yes. mixtapes. Had the boombox ready, have to put my tape in the tape deck, and be listening to the radio like this. All right, play, <laughs> record. Okay, right. record. Mm -hmm. And then it don't you miss it? It comes on, and then you don't get it at the beginning, so you gotta wait till it plays again. Listen, <sighs> these kids don't know. You hear no. me? We know. also playing outside was also like a regular thing. It was a it was a big thing. Like, like jumping we, rope with the uh with the not the extension cords, the long phone wires. We oh used to yeah, put the long phone wires up to the gate and turn in double dutch. Listen, these kids don't jumping know. rope like four square, two mm -hmm. square, um, all the different little hand games tag hide and seek i got plenty of scars on my legs from hide and seek mm -hmm. and tag mm -hmm. these kids don't know they don't know 
I remember to this day, one, when we got a cable box, okay? I remember when we got a cable box. Yep. I remember when my parents brought home a computer. AOL dial-up? Are you serious? You were if you had two phone lines. Right, because then you didn't have to get off. Girl. Like, excuse me, I need, to, I, need, I need to make a phone. I need to make a phone call, get off the internet. Or can you get off the phone because I need to look something up? You had to take this, this, the disc, the, the CD, mm -hmm. put it in the computer, let that thing load up, and then you got to call. I don't even remember how to. Yeah, you had a code or a number you had to put numbers, in. It'd be 68 million numbers. Yeah. They don't know. They would not survive. The kids that I work with, I tell them all the time, y'all would not survive how I grew up. Oh. Oh, I, I know for a fact they wouldn't. I showed them the first iPhones today. Remember the first iPhones was like this big? This is a this thick. This is a 10. Them kids wouldn't. That first iPhone was this big. It was like this big on my hand. It was like, Miss Hayes, that's not a phone. What is it? This is the first iPhone. It wasn't big. But even remember before the iPhone, the iPod, like how thick the iPod was when it first came. With the, with the spinning dial? Yep. I still have my um my iPod Nano. Oh wow. I lost my I, I have it and it's still in this little case, but I don't do anything with it. Oh, remember wait, remember the phone because I had the phone. Remember the sprint phone when like you remember like when phones were finally able to connect to the internet, but it was a sprint phone that was able to connect to Nextails and you Oh, the chirp chirp. The chirp the next tails from the sprint phone. Yeah. I used to want one just so I could do the chirping because one of my friends had it. I'd be like, can you just can you just do it? I just that's it. These they don't know it. Ring back up. when when text messages you pay for per text and your minutes and you had to wait till I think yeah. it was after seven, everybody else was after nine, so your minutes were free. Like don't be calling me before this time, using up my minutes. See, at, at first until mom changed the plan, I'd be like, listen, call me after nine, I got an hour. But then she got a new plan, so I had, call me after seven, I had two, three hours. Nah, I was... After them text messages was used, that's it. And then don't waste my text with the, the one, one letter response. <sighs> Cause you, you got charged for receiving. So yeah. I remember we'd be like, oh, wait, I'm almost out. So I'm going to just turn my phone off or I'm not going to open it. Because if I open it, they're going to charge me. <laughs> you still have to charge. It's like, look, if you're going to send me a text message, I'm going to need you to put, uh, it's going to need to be worth oh. that five cents that I got to pay to receive it. Yes. And now it. people be like, don't send me a long text. Yes. You just don't know. They don't know and them yellow screens the screens was the color of this wall the kids don't know y'all got all this fancy stuff full screens you can watch a whole movie on the phone listen y'all don't know but oh, if you had listen, to um don't know okay you had the full keyboard and texting you had to hit all the buttons go to go to go to seven and be like oh. <laughs> you you went too far then you got to delete it yeah the mm. Oh, they don't know. The 90s. Yes. I, I remember my first cell phone. I swear, this it was a flip phone. It was probably the size of this phone, but you flipped it up. Mm-hmm. The flip phone was... Look at this big old thing on my head. You, if you had one, that was like, you was, that was, the, you would, oh, yes. Flip it and pull the antenna up. You was doing something. You was big time if you had that. Good times. Good times. Remember, speaking of cell phones, I don't know why it just came into my head. Remember um, Sister Sister when Diabion, uh, when she was frauding on her phone, when, when one of the girls was like, can I use your phone? She was like, girl, this phone been off since. Oh, so big. I was like, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you said that, and I just, I remember in terms of, like, shows from the 90s, I don't know how long it was on, but Malcolm and Eddie? I do remember Malcolm and Eddie. I really didn't watch it, but I do remember Malcolm and Eddie. And then one that was, like, even 
shorter live with homeboys in outer space? Never watched. I, I watched it. I watched some of it. Um, but yeah. You know what we did not talk about? Sir Fox and the Jamie Bond show. Oh, yes. How did we? Phenomenal mm. program. Hmm? I said the Jamie Foxx show was a phenomenal program. Oh, yes. They didn't really have a lot of cameos on that show. Like, the only ones that I really remember is Mary J. Blige and Mr. Biggs. But I don't really remember. Jodeci. Jodeci was on there? Jodeci, because remember, he, was, he went on tour with, it, I think it was Jodeci. Yeah. Because he yeah. went on tour with them and then, you know, got yeah. too big for his britches. Yeah, and then they sent him home. Right, real quick. Question that, um, that song, the wedding song he sang, is like amazing. And I still might, whenever I get married, I still might want it played. I like that wedding song, but the wedding song with Kyle and Khadija. Oh, that song. Mm, I've forgotten about that. Mm -hmm. That that one's gonna be my song. That song that Kyle and Khadija sang, I was like, "This is beautiful." It is. That that one was my song. That was so many moments. Was so many moments. I'm sitting here thinking about Moesha, just thinking about the cameos. Oh yeah. You know, I was on Netflix now, and I'm watching, and I'm like, "Yo, Moesha had hella cameos. Like every episode." It was somebody. From, I think season two, there was always a cameo. Like she has so many cameos. Oh, Haji, Usher. Um, what's that fool? The boy from Onyx. That was her boyfriend. Mary oh, yeah. Lodge, Monica. I, I want to say R. Kelly was on there. I'm not sure. He was on one of them shows. <laughs> it's not that one. Like, um, Russell Simmons. So many people. MTV, BET. Um, the, the, the country singer, what was her name? The, the Kim was, uh, she, she loved her. What was her name? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm trying to think of country singers. I want to say Lorraine, but her name was Leanne Bob. Rimes? Leanne Rimes. Okay. Yes. Leanne and Rimes was there. Speaking of Moesha, the Parkers, the spinoff. You didn't like the Parkers? Problematic for me. Now... In essence, the Parkers was a good show, but it was problematic for me because when Kimberly Ann Parker was on Moesha. Not Kimberly Ann Parker. Okay, we using our full name. Whole government. When Kimberly uh -huh. Ann Parker was on Moesha, right? Mm -hmm. She was not a ditz. She was not. That is true. She was very smart. She was, and then she goes to the Parkers, and I'm like, when did you become this ditzy? She yeah. Was, she was not like this on Moesha. That was the only thing that was problematic for me. And and Ogilvy, Professor Ogilvy, because when Nikki Parker was Nicole, when she was about to get married, now all of a sudden you love her. You want to ruin the wedding day. Now that part, as much as, you know, we were talking about the TV lies, that part is pretty accurate to real life. Yeah. Like now that I'm now that I've moved on mm -hmm. and I got my stuff together, now you want to come back and mm -hmm. now you want me. Mm -hmm. that, part, that part is pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. Then I've been telling you we got a special thing going on, and now that you see me happy and getting ready to be in love and have kids, now you want to come ruin my wedding. Speaking of ruined weddings, oh. another show that lie. Okay, <laughs> you already know what I'm gonna say. You are, <laughs> I'm throwing my tissues. I'm throwing my tissues. Dwayne? Really, Dwayne? Really? That? So this is what we do? We ruin it. Well, as much as I know that that is problematic in real life, like that was one of my favorite moments of the show. How but I, I also, I am convinced that's why uh, Daddy Pope was so evil, because he was still yeah. mad that Dwayne took him, took her. She yeah. left him at the altar. Yeah. And he had to go join and start B613 and be all evil. Like, we ain't ruin that man. Ruin that man. The Whitley didn't really want him to be dead. I'm not going to put it all on Dwayne, even though Whitley did give him multiple times to be like, listen, bro, I'm going to marry this man. What you want to do? 
But at the time, Whitley knew she didn't want to marry Daddy Pope. She but did. She was doing it. She was doing it because of his status and the money, and that's you know that was the type of person that she felt like she should be with. And her mom was all excited. <laughs> Diane Carroll was that wasn't they had a bunch of cameos too. And, and what's to call it? Dwayne's mama, Patty, Patty Bell, yeah. Um, but no, because even I remember she was like, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she said, <laughs> and the minister was like, no, it has to come from her. The said, it's cool. I do. I will. So Ron, remember Ron in that scene? Ron was a thug, though. Ron was like, no, hold, wait now. But My boy's confessing his love. This, we not you need to chill out. out. I don't care what y'all got to say. You can wait. I was so mad at Dwayne. She, Whitley gave him a whole <laughs> week's worth of episodes to be like, I want to be with you. And she said, Dwayne, I won't marry this man. Tell me what you want to do. Crickets. On my wedding day? Dwayne. Mm -hmm. Problematic. Problematic. That's why it's like we put Whitney and went Dwayne and Whitney on this pedestal for so long, but it's yeah. like now. Is we're you know we're older. It's like hold up, y'all were loud, BK. I'll say you were frozen. I don't know if that was on my end or not. Oh no, I was. I I don't know. I was going like this the whole time, agreeing with you. It was me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, there were quite a few like relationships that we felt like oh that's great, or you know we people talked about it like it was great, like. Martin and Gina. I was getting ready to ask you, wait, before you go there, pick your favorite two relationships from the 90s. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of good relationships, so I'm going to just do two, your favorite two. I'm trying to, now I'm trying to go through all of them. Because I was going to say five, but then I, I felt like we would probably have a lot of similar ones. Okay. But, so one that comes to mind right away that I think was healthy mm -hmm. and I like mm -hmm. was Sinclair and Overton. Okay. Okay. Um, so wait, we're we saying our favorite ones or like just the ones that were really good? Uh, your top two, like the ones that touch your soul, your top two relationships. From the nineties. Did I lose you? I think I lost. Can you see me? Okay. No, I'm here. Sorry. I got real, I guess, I'm, even though I, I, even though it was, okay, I'm going to say something. This is, this is different. I just thought about this. Okay. Steve and Laura. Okay. That's weird, but yeah, I'm going to just go different because I just said how problematic Dwayne and Whitley were. Laura made that relationship problematic. Oh, Laura, most definitely. I guess I should say the last few seasons yeah. <laughs> and, and Steve touched my heart, but they yeah. weren't my favorite all along. In the mind too, that touched my heart. Um, of course, Moesha and Q, only because I relate to Moesha and Q because I had a Q. Mm. Um, and then I always wore braids. I still wear braids. Did he, did he call you shorty too? No, nah, he used to call me fats. Oh, okay. He used to call me fats. Um, so that, 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 that one is like my special one. That's right. And the other yeah. one is, uh, Tamara and Jordan. 
I forgot all about them. I love them. I mean, I like Tamara and Jordan and Tia and. Uh, no, they were. I like them, but what I'm, I, what I was like in thinking about this and just trying to answer the question, I'm like the ones I like. They were. It was problematic. Like it was struggle love, and I really like. But that was was like oh I want that but knowing what I know now was like no I don't it's like I don't want to work this hard for love I don't want this um, because I was gonna say Jamie and Fancy but that was problematic too it's like, a, that was, you know it's a reoccurring theme except for Gina and Mark no I can't even say that either because they had a moment also I think the only one might be Sinclair and Overton. But everybody, whether the white sitcoms or the black sitcoms, had the same problem. Nobody could say, I love you and I want to be with you. Right. Because I will, you know, like Corey and Topanga, but they definitely had their stuff. Had their issues. But I will say, when they were in high school, it was more ideal. But when they got old, you know, as they... Yeah. So it's like on some levels... But I would know, matter of fact, I would say that can, that is also a part of the way that the shows lie to us in the sense that make it, it was always portrayed that true love, you got to have a fight. There's got to be a struggle. You got to go through some things. So then you really know he loves you or she loves you and she's there for you. And it's just like, I get it. Life is not easy and relationships take work, but why the, do they really got to take all of this? Like, I got, so, and, and I realized, you know, just, I'm like, dang. I realized and how much of the lie that I bought into because even in just different relationships, it's like feeling like, oh, well, okay. If there's struggles, I mean, okay, he really care about me. And in the end, it's going to be like Dwayne and Whitley and it's going to be like Martin and Gina because in the end, they were together and they were, you know, it, the so you know quote unquote happily ever after but all of the things that they went through to get to that point it was so it, another one that i just thought about that i think wasn't problematic was when on a different world when kim started dating the guy who was in med school with her or i don't even know if he was in med school but it was like towards the end. He was a dark skinned guy. He I think he was supposed to have been Jamaican or he was he was West Indian. Yeah. Like that one. Yeah. It you know, it didn't get a lot of screen time. But I feel like that was one that was like a healthy one. Um No, dang, I can't even say they weren't problematic because they had they had a tip. It was small. I was gonna say Will and uh Nia Long's character. But Will, they weren't like super problematic. Will just had a roaming eye. He was just like being a man. But I think theirs was closer to, closer to healthy in terms of realistic. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically all of them were realistic to an extent because people do really be going through these things and staying with, you know, dating for years and years before it's, okay, no, I really want to be with you. We're going to get married, you know, this whole thing. Like, so there was some, I, there's some reality to all of it. Yeah. Sure. But I think the part where the lie comes in is that whether it was explicitly or implicitly said, it was like you want, you should aspire to this type of a relationship because we're going to glorify this. And essentially, as long as in the end you end up together, then matter. everything else was worth it and that's just a part of it and right. it's all good in the end and it's just like mm, but do i really want to go through all of that to get there now, what, one thing i did like about will and um nia's character their situation was that you know how usually in sitcoms and movies it's like the woman oh my god i want to get married i want to get married i want to get married and Nia's character was like, nah, fam, like, I want to finish you. I don't mind being engaged. I'm not going to marry you right now. But they did get to a point where they was about to get married. Yeah. And they kind of wheeled it back a little bit. So I appreciated that aspect that Nia wasn't overzealous uh, in the, in the 
what is it, the fantasy of getting married. It's just like, okay, we can get married, I'll be engaged, whatever. Mm -hmm. Versus everybody else is all crazy about getting married. When we get married, when we get married, when we get married. And it's just like, don't get me wrong, I want to be married, but that is not something that is on the list. Yeah, I would say it's closer to the top now at this point in life than it was then. <laughs> Because before it was definitely not like I got I got things that I'm doing and this is the focus. Right. You get in where you fit in. Right. And if we can fit this in, then cool. Um, but you know what's funny, just a side note, you know what's funny. You remember how when we were in our twenties, like mid twenties, latest twenties, you know how people be like, Oh, you're not married, you don't have kids. Why you not married? Why you don't have kids? But now it's a 37 year old, you like, dang, kind of need to get some kids. <laughs> right. And I, I was going to say, uh, maybe those questions have stopped for you, <laughs> but with my family, they have not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I still get the, like, matter of fact, not too long ago, like, I saw some family and it was like, so you don't have a boyfriend? No. You don't want one? Um, no, that, that's not what I said. <laughs> just not, not that i don't want one it's just it's not fact or reality right now um and i'm not going to just be with somebody for the sake of saying that i have one so but yeah no it's that isn't interesting than um or even i would say going back to the you know stuff from the 90s you know quote unquote you're supposed to be married with family i like 25 like right geez. Or, or you're a spinster right and i'm like mm. but in the same i would say in the same way that i said like we grew up in the transitional pay, mm -hmm. transitional phase of society yeah i think we're representative of that in the sense that i can say the majority of people in my circle or in, in my age group are not married or don't have children, or some do have children, but everybody's not married, and like that's not the norm anymore. Right. It's the right. norm is shifting to be that you don't get married in your twenties. Like you do, you are getting married or getting into a long-term relationship and having children in your thirties. Like that's becoming. It's it's go, it's cycling back to that because I knew I remember when my mom. Um, growing up, she would say, you know, you had your girls that was out there or whatever, but the the majority of her age group didn't start getting married and having kids until they were in their 30s. But then that dynamic went the other way where people started having kids early, younger, not getting married. Mm -hmm. And now it's like us, like you said, we're in that transitional age where we're, we're more career oriented or are, uh, want to be entrepreneurs or whatever the case is. That we have to have this done first and then it's like okay so now we can circle back and so what's up what you trying to do right because it's like now i'm like oh okay i'm ready right listen not necessarily right away but things hot like i said it, it's it's much higher on the list of priorities right 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 but it's just it is interesting and i'm trying to think if there were any shows from the 90s where that was like that was the topic but I, like in living but even when i'm thinking about living single it was the thing was still it wasn't the priority but it was always a part of the conversation specifically with regine about yeah. getting married and like having a man yeah. um, but i think they were they were in their they were supposed to be in like their mid to late 20s yeah um i can't think of anything hmm? i said they were portrayed pretty young on this show but that is a point because when you when i'm sitting here thinking about it um they were all working but when sinclair came to new york she was focusing on her active career khadijah wanted to make sure that her magazine crash burned and Max, you know, she's trying to, you know, do the lawyer thing, getting it going. Even the guys, too, though. The guys are being guys, but they were very career-oriented. Yes, and I, but, and I think, I think that was one of the things that I guess made that show different or 
stand out at the time is because that was, I guess that was a first or that was new in terms of that perspective. Whereas now most shows, most people are focused on their career or mm-hmm. some level of that, but it is interesting. Oh we know who the other guys are. Hmm? I said, then the other guys came trying to, trying to do the same show. Mm. The other yeah. guys. And then one small, they should make a black friend. Mm. No, y'all made a white living single, or you tried to make a white living single. Wait, I have, I have a good one for you. You might crack up. I'm going to see if you can guess it first before I say it. The only hint I'm going to give you is Disney Channel. The, wait, what? That's the only hint I'm going to give you. It's for a show? It was a show in the 90s. Yeah. I'll give you another hint. It was a black show in the 90s on Disney Channel. I don't know if this was Disney or Nickelodeon, but Gullah Gullah Island is coming to mind. I was not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you said no. a black show on a black show I on the Disney Channel. Gullah Gullah Island. I that- mean, it's a black show. And it was the 90s. Um Smart Black Girl. Oh, that was Disney. That wasn't Disney Channel. What was it? That was like uh, WB or whatever. It's on Disney Plus now. It's on Disney now. But it wasn't on Disney. That's, that's why I was like, a black show on Disney Channel? <laughs> that was- Disney brought all these TV shows. In- yeah, that's. I was like, huh? oh, you know, Smart Guy was definitely. Smart Guy. Really, was so I love Smart Guy. They had a good amount of cameos, too. Mm-hmm. That, um, that's this child cameo. You know what? Maybe that's the only one. Let me stop. I remember that one, but that was the only like big name. Might, yeah, that might have been the only one. Um, Jason Weaver is another one that I feel like doesn't get yeah. his credit. Listen, if he had the right music people behind him, I think he would have been pretty good. Possibly, but he and I'm also wondering because I saw an interview he did. I think it was last year talking about how his mom negotiated his contract for the Lion King and that he didn't get a whole lot of money up front, but she negotiated that he got part of the royalties. Oh, that's good. So he's good. Yeah. So So I'm wondering if it is that he just didn't really feel like he had or needed to (laughs) because, and, and I don't know, because I know he was on, he did that song with Chingy. And and it was yeah. Um, but I wonder if it's like, did he ever really want to do music and it just didn't happen or he wasn't that pressed because right, because he had off of Li- um, Lion King alone, he's good. Mm-hmm. He did the uh, he did the Jackson Five story. I was getting ready to say that, and he was Lil Michael Jackson. Yeah, he was Lil Michael Jackson. He was in the line, or he sang. On, you know, saying and was in the Lion King. Mm-hmm. Then he had Smart Guy. Yeah. Well, I, was, I thought I thought I thought Jason Weaver sang Simba, but I thought the little uh, the little white boy from Home Improvement was the voice. I thought he. I I thought that's how they did it. I don't know, like that. I don't know for sure. I know that he sang. I yeah. don't remember whether or not he was like in it or not. Every time they open the vault, he gets another couple million dollars. He's good. And they remade it. And anytime it gets sampled. So Jason, he's, he's definitely good. He's definitely he's good. good. And if his mom negotiated that kind of deal for that, I'm sure she had something pretty decent for the Jackson 5 movie too. Mm-hmm. And for Smart Guy. Mm-hmm. And he was in, he was in a couple movies. He did, like, a lot of the, uh... BET movies. BET movies, or, like, the independent movies. Uh, thingamajig. You know thingamajig. Hold ATL on. and... Eight, talking about that movie? He was in ATL. Look, I was thinking a lottery ticket. He was in oh. <laughs> He <laughs> was in that, too. So, yeah, he's done a lot of those types of things. And I'm, I just, I'm wondering, is it because he 
didn't really want to do more or was it that was you know what what happened but right yeah i got another good one for you gonna crack up at this one are you ready for this i mean i don't know no i'm gonna give you another hint oh goodness and you probably not gonna get it but i'm gonna give you another hint black sitcom nickelodeon and it's not keenan and kel oh my brother and me oh wow i completely forgot or about cousin that. skeeter cousin skeeter was what i was thinking about Oh, my brother and me. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't, okay. wasn't that Rashad? R- R- Richard, what is his name? Wasn't Ricard. he? R- Ricard? He was in uh, Cousin Skeeter. He wasn't in My Brother and Me? I think. So that was, um, no, Megan Good was in Cousin Skeeter. Amanda Seals was in My Brother and Me. I only know that because she said it in an interview. I had forgot. And then I had to go back and look at a clip and it was like, oh, shoot, she was. She was the sister. I'm about to look this up right now, my brother. But yeah, I want to say Ricard, whatever his name is, was in Cousin Skeeter. And Megan Good. Yeah, Robert Ricard was in uh cousin skeeter i don't remember this tv show at all i'm looking at this. my brother and me i'm looking at it yeah alfie and goo they matter of fact they lived in i want to say they lived in charlotte or at least in north carolina they were in north carolina oh wow i'm gonna have to find that show and watch it that is funny my brother and me see. oh it was only one season and it was in 94 i didn't realize it had Wow, you took me back on that one. Wow. <gasps> okay. Mm-hmm. We have to talk about this before. I can't even say that because I'm looking at my list and as okay. I'ma just say them because these are phenomenal TV shows. First one, hanging with Mr. Cooper. Oh, how did we? Mm, yes. Next. One on one. Yeah. You like one on one? I mean, I liked it. Not as much as the others, but I liked it. I did watch it. Oh, well, I, we briefed over Keenan and Kel, but did you watch Keenan and Kel? Yes. And all that. Of course. It's all. You know, another thing, speaking of all that, remember how a lot of the shows in the 90s always had a musical guest? Yes. Or a music person that just performed on the TV. Mm-hmm. Good times back then, man. Nick Cannon does that with um, Wild and Out. Mm-hmm. Most episodes he has somebody. Huh? We don't even have Wild and Out anymore. Did it? Did they cancel that too? Oh, uh, what? You didn't, you didn't. I know that the, the stuff, but I didn't know if they were. Girl, Viacom ripped that thing down so fast. Tay, let me tell you how I found out, right? I was mad because I do watch Wild and Out just to see what the kids is listening to. <laughs> so I'm waiting for Wild and Out to come on one night. I'm like, why am I looking at the Fresh Prince? And it's just Fresh Prince, Fresh Prince, Fresh Prince, Fresh oh, Prince. Shoot. And then I'm scrolling on Twitter and it was like, Nick Cannon, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dang, what did Nick say? And then I look, I said, well, you know I mean, I knew about that, but I was—I guess it was maybe it was—I was hoping that Wild and Out got spared because, like, he created that, and I hope he has ownership of that or some level of ownership. He can't take—he cannot take Wild and Out, according to Viacom. He cannot take Wild and Out to another Viacom uh, network. No, yes. M- that's no- a way. VH1, no ABC, no NBC, no Lifetime, no WeTV, no Rob, nothing. Hey, I, re- I saw that statement. I was like, oh, so my oh. man. Wait. Mm-hmm. So they're just saying he can't take it to one of their channels or just to, to no one? But see, I don't, I, like you said, I don't know if he owns. I need to look this up. Um, but as far as like it going to another Viacom station, it can't go to another Viacom station. Well, yeah, I figure it wouldn't go to an, I figured they wouldn't let it go to another Viacom station. Mm-hmm. I'm just, 
I just found an article. I'm gonna have to read that later because yeah. um, I saw that post. I was like, oh, so y'all are big, man. Y'all are I not- do. Well, yeah, because that's just like, okay, does he really own it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, another show from the nineties. Wild and Out came on when we was in high school, and that was like the thing. Yeah, when it first started. Um, another one that I don't know if we didn't talk about was the Wayans Brothers. Mm-hmm. You didn't like that one. Hate the television show. <laughs> Why do you hate it? <laughs> oh my gosh. And everybody's like, Why do you hate the Wayans Brothers? The Wayans Brothers was such coonery. It drove me. But it's the way, I mean, like, I'm not gonna, it's definitely not one of my like, oh, all time, like it's not high, but it was, it was, it was decent. Like it was a good laugh, but it was, to me, it was on brand with what the Wayans do. Coonery. Well, those two anyways. Yeah, I don't understand. No, no, I just. Marlon specifically <laughs> is like, He's extremely talented and, and smart, but he's like goofy as all get out. Mm-hmm. And it's like we're not. So hmm? I thought he was so cute. Yeah, but it was like he just does the most. And he, he still does the most with his yeah. movies and things. But that was one thing in watching um, In the House this weekend, seeing how much they're so such a. Um, Kim and Marlon are so similar. Mm-hmm. in appearance and even in their like the physical comedy yeah. but but yeah that was one I'm trying to think I was I was I you know I just I wanted to fight Sean like Sean you're not that cute well yeah no Sean was stop it I don't know what the but, word is but since you brought up the Wayne's brothers let's discuss the fashion for a second <laughs> they took it to the extreme of the baggy clothes but all the guys was wearing their clothes like that though even if you think of like Rockefeller and them like the that was the style you remember the tall tees huh you remember genuine and the oh Oh. genuine wore baggy bootcut jeans or something I'm like (laughs) what and then the shirt that was like Two, three times too big. And then wait, my favorite part of that was the oversized fitteds. Remember the oversized? They had to come all the way down. <laughs> and you would wear it backwards, and you can go like this, put two fingers up in the head. Yes. What were we wearing in the late nineties? And it tra- it transpired into the early two thousands. Pretty much every bad boy video. Tall tees, long jerseys, the jerseys. Why mm. jerseys? First of all, your jersey's supposed to stop at your waist. Mm-mm. You're supposed to go down to your knees. You it's didn't know that? supposed to go down to your knees. A grown man that is about 6'3 should not be wearing a t-shirt down to his knees. <laughs> Where do you find a shirt that long? In Shaq's closet? Foot locker. Foot action. Gosh. Finish line. All of them. But you remember, was- you used to be able to get them. It would be like five for 25 everywhere I, I was also buying those t- i wasn't buying the tall ones i'm not gonna lie i had some too however I, i'm ashamed now to say oh yeah no because and even in you know in my attempts to try to be a tomboy as much as i they weren't gonna let me matter of fact i have um like from from basketball we remember he would always get the we'd have shirts like that we were wore for like pregame or whatever I still had some of those and they still fit like regular. Like I have shirts from high school that they now fit regular <laughs> because I had gotten them that big mm-hmm. then. And it's just like this makes no sense. This makes no sense at all. So but funny. yeah, I'm mm-hmm. happy that that phase seems to have uh, exited and I hope it does not return. But wait, here's the kicker, right? They had the audacity to wear belts. With those yes. <laughs> because, but how else was it going to stay up? 
Why are you buying your pants that big anyway? Because that was the style. Duh. I, if I had to choose, I'm going to be honest. If I had to choose between the oversized boot cut jeans and skinny jeans, I'd take the oversized boot cut jeans. Oh, yeah, no. Because to me, there is a fine line between fitted and skinny. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys now mm -hmm. are buying skinny but claiming they're fitted. Buying my jeans. Yes, and 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 they don't have the body for it. Mm -hmm. But it's like I all these and that's a whole other, you know, that could be a whole other topic, but it's just like cause I, I appreciate a fitted look. I appreciate a guy who, you know, like if it's not necessarily always tailored, but Jeez. Yeah, I can. You buy your clothes that fit you. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I like that look. I appreciate that. Sure. But then when it's, I can see that your thighs and your calves are are struggling. You walk like this. Yeah, and then trying to put your hands in your pocket and you can't. Or your, everything is sticking out. Um, or your shirt is. You think you're a medium, but you're not, and it's not muscular. It don't look like it does when The Rock put his on. It's just rolls hanging over the skinny jeans. <clears throat> I look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what? That shirt might be a little too tight. I feel like you should look in the mirror and say, this shirt might be a little too small. And my other thing is, I know you can feel it. Because when you got to keep doing this and... And you adjusting like, sir, I know this. I know this life because I've been living this life my whole life. You're new to this. Mm -hmm. It's too tight. Mm -hmm. And now I don't care if it is the fashion trend right now. It's not the one for you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to do it, I need you to buy it in your actual size. Absolutely. Know your body. Cause, mm. So, yes, when it comes to that, yes, bring back the baggy clothes or the baggy jeans at the very least. Did you have a jersey dress? I did not. My sister did. Yeah, my jersey dress. I know you. I know that you had one because I feel like there was a time when y'all came to school in matching. Probably. Well, know. it wasn't the dresses, but y'all did have like matter of fact, I, huh? Airbrush shirts. That's what you talk about. Yes, I found a picture when I was um, home yeah. the last time of y'all, and I was showing my mom. Yeah. Listen. I was, and y'all had the hats too. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a, well, I think I got a picture of you in a denim outfit. You had a denim outfit, right? I definitely had a denim outfit. <laughs> the denim outfits was popping. Denim, oh. denim, denim skirts, denim jacket. Still have a denim jacket. Still oh. have, I got like a denim t shirt dress or something. Or it's like, what a button up something it looks better than how i'm describing it but it's something denim because <laughs> I'm, I'm automatically i'm like a denim t-shirt dress not a t-shirt dress it's um almost like i guess like if it was a button up okay oh, yeah. and it's got a belt so yeah like i said it I it looks better than how i'm describing it but um i was, I was about to say ma'am <laughs> like i need you to throw that away what are we doing and not return. I'm trying to think if there are any other shows that we have. I don't know. I was thinking Girlfriends, but the Girlfriends was 2000s. Yeah, that was 2000. Yeah, was the 2000s. Was the Hughley show 2000s also? Yeah, the Hughleys. Wow, I don't know. I feel like that and the Bernie Mac show were like 2000s. Was Bernie Mac 2000s? I don't know. Like they were right. They they're in that. So yeah, the Hughley started in '98 and it had four seasons. The Bernie Mac show, 2001 to 2006. Oh, remember? Um, no, that's probably 2000s. Also, um, why does these shows keep escaping my tongue? Um, what? Excuse me. What is the show that was based on Will Smith's life with? Uh, all of us. All of us. I think that was that was back when UPN was still a channel. That and it was all the black shows were on it. Um, oh, that was two thousand three. That all the black shows you can find them either on the WB 
UPN. You know what we didn't talk about? Steve Harvey. Yeah. Oh, I, I had that thought earlier. Steve Harvey, definitely. Steve Harvey show. Steve Harvey show. That was a good show. I feel like there was something else on no, at that time. Steve Harvey. That's what I was just thinking about. Something else came out around that time. Oh, hell, the nineties was popping, man. Nineties was such a good time. It was like fun. You had something to look forward to in the nineties. What else came out? And it probably was because we also we were young and we didn't have no real responsibilities. <laughs> That's true because. You know how back in the day, your parents would be like, oh my God, your music you listen to is so annoying. And then I hear myself saying that with my kids now, I, the kids that I work with, I'm like, what are you listening to? Like, this right. is rash. And then I'm like, oh my God, I sound like my mother. Yeah, so Steve Harvey show was 96 to 2002. I didn't realize it had been on that long. It was on that long. Yeah, that's a long time. Um, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me and the boys. I have no idea what that is, actually. It came up when I looked up Steve Harvey. It was apparently it was only one season. Did we talk about hanging with Mr. Cooper? You mentioned it, but we didn't really like go into it. But that was that, that was, was a, a great show. Yeah. And then when Raven got on the show, when she was a little bit older, that was a good show. I like that show, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I can't remember the theme song, but Hanging with Mr. Cooper was fun. I did like it. I, I like that one. I also, in looking up Steve Harvey, remember The Apollo was on. Like Showtime at the Apollo? Yeah, that, that was good. Um, there were also a lot of great movies from the 90s, but... Yeah, that, that's like a whole other... Yeah, so hang on. Watch, um, because... Okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was when reality shows like started to become a thing, oh. like when the real world first premiered. But there was a show on Disney Channel um, in the nineties. It was I, I, it was like Camp Wawa Camp Wawa. Nowhere. Then, Come on, Camp Nowhere. I, I can't remember what it was called, but when I tell you, I was like, I'm going to that camp. Period. I'm going to that camp. I think it was Camp Nowhere or... I'm about to find it. I, it, I, I want to say it was Camp Walla Walla, though. Or it had something with a W, I feel like. Let me see. Camp Yeah. You know, I appreciate Google, even though we didn't have it. Right. We, we were still going to the library. These kids don't know nothing about... Oh, wait. Library. Camp Nowhere was a movie. Camp Reality TV show... Disney Channel? It was on the Disney Channel. I used to watch it all the time. It was on the Disney Channel. Um, Bug Juice. That's what it was called. What? It was called Bug Juice. That's the name of that camp. Was that the name of the show, too? Yeah, it's called Bug Juice. I don't think I... 1999. And it was a camp... Or 1998. Listen, yeah, I don't think I, I watched that one. And I, when I tell you, I wanted to go to that camp so bad. I was like, listen, y'all need to figure out how to get me to this camp. Speaking of places that I wanted to go. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that is my... I forgot about the other phone over here. Um, but no, speaking of places I want to go, uh, Global Gut or that that one and then the uh the um i know rock, the rock one the adventures or something yes, other the other adventures or something like i wanted to go on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wanted to do that what is the show it was like the slime show on nickelodeon yes i you wanted to tools and you get slime yeah okay salute your shorts did you watch that one? I don't remember that one. It was another like camp based show. Yeah, it was like they were at a summer camp. It came on Nickelodeon. Um there's so many. 
Right. Like, I didn't do a lot of, I didn't watch a lot of cartoons, but. Yeah, recess. Recess. Um, what was it? The Animaniacs? Futures? What? Animaniacs? Animaniacs. Rugrats. Yeah. Hey Rug- Arnold, Doug. Hey Arnold, Doug? Oh my gosh. Um, Tunes are cute. Oh, uh, oh, it's right here. Um, Our Real Monsters. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, um, the other one with um, Nigel Thornberry, the, the Wild Thornberries. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that Wild one. Wild Thornberries. Mm-hmm. Yo. That was... Good times, man. Listen. I mean, I know there are several that we have not even... Yeah. Oh, wait. In Living Color was the 90s. I thought that had started in the 80s, but no. In Living Color was another great I, one. I didn't really watch that until I got older, though, because I I didn't know what I was watching. So, okay. So, I don't know when I started watching a lot of these. Because, like I said, I was out of the country right. for a good part of the 90s. Because sometimes, I, when I look at, like, when shows actually started, I'm like, wait, how was I watching that then? Or when did I watch it? But I associated with, I know that I watched it as a kid. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm pretty sure I was not watching in a different world in 87. Because <laughs> I was born in But I discovered it and then watched it throughout. Uh, but, yeah. Did you, um... Uh, what is that show? Did you watch the PJs? Yes. You remember the PJs? Mm-hmm. The PJs. Oh. Mm, let me see what else is coming up here. I don't know what else. Oh, um, did you watch Mad TV? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Not really. I just saw that one. We talked about all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not looking on there. I just want to say that I've been watching Moesha since it's been on Netflix. And I just want everyone to know that Moesha was the most problematic teenager that (laughs) I have ever. She really was though. Do you, let me ask you this question because maybe- She had an attitude problem like no other. She had an attitude problem. What teenager do you know that's going to turn down a free car with free gas and free car insurance that you do not have to pay for. Not this one. I know I, I wasn't a drop top Saturn and you gonna pay for it. Please, can I have two of them? For that daggone chunk of trunk toy truck that she was driving around. What was the one to Oh, that's right. She wanted her Jeep. Yeah, she, she wanted the Jeep, or she had like come on the Jeep. Yeah, no. I mean, speaking of Moesha, I meant to say this earlier. Hair was always late. Um, like, braids. Brandy in general, like was I was always trying to get my hair like her or get braids like her. I wore braids most of my life, yeah. largely because I was always trying to get them to get it like her. Yeah. yeah. Rarely did that happen. But yeah, no. Moesha was. He's problematic, man. He was problematic, like that. Even and that was the other thing I thought about with that show. I don't know how many shows were like addressing the blended family. Yeah. Thing. So like that was you know they touched on that and just how evil she was to D at first. Yeah. And like that whole thing and all the time she'd be sneaking out or she used Hakeem. Probably a little bit of everything. Well, I get well. Well, you just you just said blended family though, and I'm sitting here thinking about it. I'm like, I think well, it wasn't blended. Shows that had blended families. Well, I mean, not blended, but I well, know yeah, there wasn't blended, but like Fresh Prince, he came from Philly, was living with them. Right, gotcha. And um, what's it called? The Cosby Show when when uh, Denise got married to the dude, and they was living in the house. Right. Well, I guess I mean in the sense of second marriage and kids from another marriage in that sense um but like i said i remember that being different when it when i saw it, like for me in terms of seeing it on tv yeah. um, but i think in terms of you know having somebody come live with you i feel like that's almost the norm <laughs> it's it, in black families at least in mine that's the norm <laughs> yeah sure. uh, but 
But what? yeah, what else? I'm just watching because I'm gonna watch the whole series, but I'm just like, man, yo, and she was awful. She was terrible. I, I mean, haven't she- started watching it yet on Netflix. Um, a, a terrible influence. <laughs> Once again, the way that TV lied to us. Because I was looking forward to that experience, but now that I'm an adult, I'm just like, uh-uh. it's awful, man. I wouldn't to fight her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She was doing the most. Did the most dot com. Did you watch Xena Warrior Princess? Yes. That was the 90s. Speaking of Xena, did you ever watch any of the Power Rangers series? Yes. Yes. Power Rangers and those Mighty Morphin. Those minimal, what is it, theatrics and (laughs) and graphics. Looking back now, it's like, oh, y'all really wasn't doing anything. (laughs) Oh. Um, that, that, that was funny. The Magic School Bus. Oh my god. Of course. <laughs> this is travel. Words. Right on the Magic School Bus. Yes. That and, um. Um, the puppet. The puppet. What's the puppet? Oh, you know the puppet. The sheep. From the. Oh, the lamb chops. Lamb chops. This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll just keep on singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. Good times, man. It used to annoy my parents with that, or any adult for that matter. Just start singing it. Okay, I have to ask you this. Don't judge me because I don't care. I used to watch it. Okay. Did you watch Barney? Yes. <laughs> I watched it, but most of the time it was reluctantly because my sister would want to watch it because she loved Baby Bop. Yeah. I, when I tell you I was the biggest Barney fan today, I had Barney covers, Barney sheets, Barney pillowcase, Barney dinosaur. Listen, it was a tell me nothing about Barney. I can believe it. Like, I watched it, but then it was like I got to this point where I felt like I was too old for it. I was trying to be mature or something. Yeah. So I was like, mm, I'm too old for that. I'm going to watch the adult shows. He wasn't But I still watched it. You know, grown ass man in a barn in a, a dinosaur costume. A little creepy. Right. But at the same time, you had Big Bird. And Big Bird is still pretty creepy. <laughs> yeah. Big Bird is still, still out here. Big Birdin. Uh, let me see what else was there. Was Alf the 90s? Was who Alf? I don't know. Alf. It was like I don't know what kind of animal he was supposed to be, but he had like a really big nose. I remember having Alf cups, but I think that might have been that may have been the 80s. I'm not sure. Um, you remember Bobby's World? Bobby's they were from like Minnesota. I just remember the mom because she was like, "Oh, don't you know?" That's all I really remember about the show. <laughs> I'm not judging you, but I don't know what you talked about. Alf. Oh yeah, I remember Alf. Yeah, like I don't know what kind of animal. I didn't watch much. I just remember like that face. Yes, the face, yeah. but I couldn't tell you much of anything about the show. Winnie the Pooh. No, Winnie the Pooh was the 80s. When I watched it in the 90s. But there were... There were episodes in the 90s. There were episodes in the 90s. Winnie the Pooh. I don't know the rest. That was my boy. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Um, what was that cartoon? It was on Nickelodeon. It was called, I think it was called Rocket. Did you watch Rocket? Mm. It was, it was like these little kids and they were skateboarders or something. Oh, yeah, no. 
Rocky. No, I don't think I watched that one. Oh, no. Man, I mean, I feel like we definitely touched on the everything. Well, not the everything. One. Not everything, but I would say the the ones that were important to us. <laughs> uh, one, two more, two more. Because I just thought about it because I looked at the camera and saw this yellow wall and I have no idea why the yellow wall reminded me of the first one I'm going to say, The Golden Girls. Was that the 90s? Well, they started in the 80s. They went, uh, yes, Golden Girls. Yeah, that's a classic. And I still watch it like I've never seen every single episode. And the nanny named Fran. Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> Get out of my head. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mr. Sheffield. That was another problematic relationship. Super problematic. But they ended up together in the end. But well, why do all of that, though? You think your housekeeper is attractive. Be with your housekeeper. Call it a day. Why do we got to go through these hoops and hurdles? You date and she date and she date and you date and then you get married. Because that's not, that's not the way, you know, you, you're not supposed to. That's not she wasn't from the right area you know all of those all these titles and the pretenses and everything all the shoulds yeah like that's true, that's true. And, a, and a lot of those shows in the 90s touched on those social norms definitely like that was heavy um in just of like oh well no i can't date this person because they don't do this or they're from there or we're from different worlds it's a different world <laughs> right which is why she ended up leaving that man at the altar. Discuss that problematic relationship again because it's going to upset me. <laughs> Make no sense. She but gave this- that man a whole week's worth of episodes. <laughs> I love you and I want to be with you. Oh. You wait until I'm about to walk down the aisle. No, nope, she's about- already down the aisle. Right. About to say, I do. Like, they was all but married, but, and look, like, okay, and then this is me thinking about it, like, practically speaking, because what I have learned is most of the time people are already legally married when they go to the ceremony. That's true. The license. Uh-huh. So I'm wondering, but then I know some people, they wait until the ceremony and then they sign. Like, they'll have it, but they don't sign it until after the ceremony. So it's like, we'll give them the Right. Benefit of the doubt is they hadn't signed it and they were going to do it after. But like... Still problematic. Still a shame. Right. Still not okay. But I remember having the thought of like, ooh, I want somebody to come. I kind of want to have that happen. That's the lie. Because the lie is like, you know, that he really loved her. Like he... And he going to come get me from... Like, I'm going to be about to marry somebody else. And then he's going to, the one I really want to be with is going to come. But I'm like, all of the time, energy, the money and everything that like, just like the reality of that, like the fallout from that. No, I don't want that. And I don't wish that I would, I'm not going to lie. It would be interesting to witness, Mm -mm. but I don't really want that to happen. (laughs) Definitely would. But I know me and I'm going to have an attitude. Because I know that you and I had a conversation. <laughs> and I said to you, Ruh, I'm about to marry homie. I'm giving you another opportunity. I'm giving you three more chances. Right. You're down to two. Now you're down to one. And you're going to wait until I'm about, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. And I'm going to marry you. But we're going to have a conversation about this. Right. And then he was there the night before. Two nights before, Tay, not just one. Mm -hmm. I have a conversation with you about the fact that you ruined my wedding. And even though I wanted to marry you, I still don't appreciate you ruining my wedding. And I'll have to have another one. But they never did. And it wasn't another wedding, but (laughs) 
want to marry you in front of his people? Right. That was the gift. Yeah, it really is so problematic. <laughs> You know, you watch these things as an adult and you're just like, it's cute and everything, but... No, like, there's way too much. Too much. And I can see myself, like, at this point, I wouldn't go, I know, I wouldn't go, I would not go through the process of actually even preparing to marry Byron. Right. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it because I would know that, okay, I don't really... Exactly. I don't really love you. No, but I could see, like, being you know she was in her early 20s i could i could potentially see myself doing something like that then because okay no i i can love you i'll getting ready to marry someone else and still be in love with someone else i i don't know like i could see how being younger and the knowing most of your life that you were you know you you need to get married yeah. and live a certain lifestyle and whatever so it was like byron embodied all of the things that right she had been taught that she should want and should do and so right. it's like well it's always been something with me and Dwayne. right he got a lot of potential right girl that not, word, boy. right but the finances are not there yet and so i could see how you could essentially persuade yourself to say okay He's not my ideal, but I could grow to love him. I, I mean, I do have a good time with him. I like him. Mm -hmm. I'll have a good life, like that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because and it was also being with Dwayne was also still a risk because it's this. I know you're intelligent. I know you have the potential to make a whole lot of money and do all this stuff, mm -hmm. but you're not there yet. And you want to go help people. <laughs> And I don't, and Whitley didn't like working. <laughs> yeah. So I could definitely see like how old you got to that point. Yeah. yeah. But me today, nah. <laughs> as much as I would like to be married and, you know, have a family and all that stuff, if I got doubts and reservations. Right. Like I'm old now. I don't look, got I know how to, look, <laughs> I know how to be single, I know how to take care of myself. And I'm not about to bring somebody else into my life just for the sake right. of. Right, exactly. I was married now. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna look at you, like. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, oh, so we doing this? All right. Girl, these shows is problematic. Okay. Right, but I still love them. Before I let you go, before we close out, because we're talking about problematic, you know one couple that we did not talk about that was problematic? I mean, we talked about the show, but we didn't talk about their problems in their relationship. Steve Harvey and Regina. They too. Piggy. <laughs> Piggy. Yeah. You made fun of her because she was an overweight lover back in the day. She lost all this weight. She was giving you a hard time. Then you was trying to get with her. She don't want to get. Why? Why is this? All this back and forth. <laughs> it's a continuous theme with all these TV shows. And I guess maybe part of it was to keep people watching or you have, you got to have some drama, but yeah. does it really take all of that? Like. Apparently, because we watched all of it. <laughs> can they just, can they, can you just. But I guess it's like you had that and then you had, well, no, they were already together. It was like you had mm -hmm. uh, Cliff and Claire, but we didn't see their stuff before. We didn't see their love story. We, they talked about it, but mm -hmm. everything else was, because I guess at that, that point, I think to the 90s, like dating was a thing or like that was becoming yeah. bigger in terms of like the whole process of dating, which. Yeah, there definitely was a shift in the shows. That's for sure. And dating now is even stranger. <laughs> hmm. That's a show. Yeah. Okay. That is a show for another day, for a Tuesday and Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm. I 
<laughs> like, why? Where is Quentin? Dang. I was in love with Quentin. Quentin. Q. From Moesha. Okay. You really want a Q? Not dang on Q from Love and Basketball. Listen, when I tell you, I was like the whole narrative of a gangster and a gentleman that Q was giving, I was here for it. I don't know. I was to embody my inner Moesha Mitchell. Okay? Don't judge me. But we just talked about how problematic she was, so. Problematic. But I didn't know that as a teenager. As right. A, I wasn't even a teenager when that came out. I was in junior high school or something. Yeah, no, I'm, I don't even know anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want a mixture of a, several different characters, but. That's a little, a little at this point, I'm just like, okay, God, clearly I don't know how to pick, so. Drop him for me. Let me know. You just, you. I'm just, I'm, I'm really, tr I'm doing my best to just sit still and just wait. Mm -hmm. And okay, let me do what I need to do and work on me. So whenever he shows up. Right. Or we bump into each other, however it happens. Right. I'll be ready. And Lord, I hope he's doing whatever he needs to do. <laughs> That, in this, during this time as well. That part. All of that part. And that potential, majority of the potential has been realized. That part again. Yes. Well, because we're going to sit here for another hour and a half. We're not going <laughs> to. So, my dearest friend. Yes. Definitely have to do this again. Yes, yes, yes. This was fun. And Definitely fun. I'm so glad that you, this was something that you was like wanting to do too, because I've been wanting to do a show like this for a long time. So. Yes. Um, I love the 90s and there are so many things, like we could do it on movies. Oh, for sure. Action, yeah, so many things. But. Um, so before we close out, drop your socials. Okay, yeah. so it's all good podcast on Instagram. It's podcast. It's all good um, on Facebook. It's it's all good, and then me personally, uh, on Instagram is Lala underscore Esquire. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. So my beautiful people, we want to thank you, my homegirl Octavia, with it's all good podcast, talking about some '90s shows and their problems that they've caused us in our youth. Right. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you soon. All right.